Okay, so page 262 of your student journal. On page 262, we're going to start talking about um, graphing these functions in a different format. So just a quick review of what we've done. You have graphed functions in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's where we're at right now. You, you have found that the vertex and the axis of symmetry, you have special equations for those. Tell your neighbor the equation for your axis of symmetry. Okay, now from what I just heard, a lot of you are forgetting the first part of it, which messed some of you up on your test. By the way, you are on your quiz. On your quiz, you guys did really well overall as a class. Very well, like an 81% well. Okay, and that's before before any retakes. I think we've had one retake. Okay, that's that's really good. Okay, so the one area that some of you messed up when you're doing axis symmetry, you forgot to say x equals. You have to say x equals. You have, otherwise, you're not specifying that it's on the x-axis. Okay, the vertex. Tell your neighbor how you find the vertex. Come on, man. I not believe it. It's true. You plug it in. Okay. You do. You do. Um, Tyler's going to tell us what value this is right here. Go ahead, Tyler. You got it. Yeah. So it's just the X value? Okay. Yeah, I guess. So Tyler's guessing that it's the X value. The X value is actually negative B over 2A. These two values are exactly the same. Not sure if that was the guess he was going with, but there you got it. Those are the same values. And if we know that, then we take this and we plug it into this equation. Okay, which is kind of some of the stuff that I was hearing up here. You just plug it in. Okay. Mm -hmm. You plug that into this. Now if we were rather than to call this y equals, if we were to say f of x equals, we could really say really what we're trying to do to find the y value of our vertex is to plug in f of negative b over two a. So in other words, whatever opposite of b over 2a is, you plug that in for your x values. That means it would get plugged in there and there, and you would solve, and that would tell you your y value here. So in mathematics, or mathematically, the way we express this is that's how you find the other point in your vertex. The opposite of b over 2a, comma, f of opposite of b over 2a. For those of you that look at that and you're like, I have no idea what that means then really what you need to say is you find your axis of symmetry, plug it into your equation, and find the other value. It's just what we've been doing for the last week. Okay? Now, the difficulty with this graphing is when we had this big, long equation, we had to go through all this work, and then we, then we kind of use patterns to solve from there. What I'm going to do today is rather than you using standard form, which is what this is called, We are going to use a new form called vertex form. It's probably a good thing to write down. Just so at least be ready to take notes. Whoever's uh, dealing with food over there? Yeah, I bet you are. Who's the big one? Okay, like it's it's kind of loud and distracting, and not to mention if someone's allergic to that stuff, then I've got issues, man. So, be hungry. Okay, it's, I'm hungry too, trust me, but just set it aside for now. Okay, vertex form. Vertex form is y equals a, by the way, these a's are the same, that a and that a are exactly the same, times x minus h, quantity squared, all plus k. This is a pretty easy form. You love vertex form, even if you don't know that you love vertex form. Some of you know you love vertex form, if that made any sense. Okay? So, HK is your vertex. That's how easy this form is. Your axis of symmetry, then, is X equals, let's see if anyone can figure that out, talk to your groupies about it. What's your axis of symmetry going to be? Hey, Isaiah, what do you got? 
whatever H is. Parshagi. H. Maybe that's what it stands for. All right. X equals H. It's these are the same. Okay. All right. Think we got it? Huh? Yeah. Hey, Arch. Yeah. Nice. All right. Just so you know, on page 262 of your student journal, we'll go. We'll come back to odd and even functions. But that's what this is talking about right here. All this, all this wordiness that it says. Let's read through it, just because you have to be able to read the math. When h is greater than zero, the graph of this is a horizontal translation h units to the right of ax squared. So in other words, it's saying when it's bigger than zero, it's moving this way. They are. It's math English. Okay. When it's less than zero, it's a horizontal translation to the left. It's moving this way. Okay. The vertex of the graph is h0. The axis of symmetry is x equals h. All right. Now that notice it says h0. That's when there's no k value. When you move on, if you look at the next side, they bring the k into it. They're saying, okay, well, when you, ha when you put that k in there, the vertex form of quadratic function is this, where a cannot be 0. Notice if a is 0, what happens to this whole chunk right here? It becomes 0 which means it's no longer a quadratic. How do you know that this whole function is a quadratic? Because yeah. X is squared. Okay? So when it's not zero, the graph of this is a translation, h units horizontally and k units vertically. So in other words, it moves left or right h units and up or down k units. The vertex is hk, the axis of symmetry is x equals h. All right. So, that being said, let's see if we can find the vertex of these. Take a look at number 5 and 6 on the bottom of page 263. I want you to tell your neighbor what the vertex and axis of symmetry are after you figure them out. All right, man. Okay, here comes the confusion. What is H? Actually, better yet, what's K? Zero. K is 0. Okay, Bailey, what's H? Who says it's 2? Who says it's negative 2? Uh oh. Now, remember in vertex form, it says this. Now, the, this is the reason we go through it, because it, this is the confusing, this only confusing piece about this. Read vertex form. It says a times x minus h, right? So, really, what we do to find h is we cover that part up. H is that. So when this says a, this is a times x minus h. So we cover that part up. X is, or h is two. Okay, you guys. Probably the better way to think about this, and the way that will help you later on in in math, is think of it this way. What will make that equal zero in there? And the answer is two. Okay, so h is 2, k is 0. What's the axis of symmetry? It's not 2. It's not 2, 0. What is it, Isaiah? x equals 2. All right. You got to put x equals. Okay. Okay, here we go. Number, number 6. Person number 30 is number 6 today. No, number 30, number 19. Who is it? Aaron. Go ahead, Aaron. What's uh, H here? Negative what? Negative 8, yes. It's whatever makes this 0. Or the opposite of that. And person number 10, what's K? It is um 0. Yes, um 0. Okay, and so therefore our vertex is negative 8, 0. Catherine, you done? Very good. Okay, and what is our axis of symmetry? Um, number 3. Is that you? 
Um, negative 8? Nope, it's not negative 8. It is x equals negative 8. Well done. All right. Okay, any questions? All right, I want you to turn the page. Look at the top of page 264. Go ahead and find number 7 and 8. Axis of symmetry and vertex for those. This is true. All right, here we go. Number 30. We don't have a 30. Number 6. Ooh, that's me. Vertex. 1 and 4. Well done. 1 and 4. Okay. Person number 12. Who's 12? Me. All right. X equals 1. Very good. Hey, any questions on that? Remember, these two are always the same. Okay. All right, number four, who's this? What's this? Is that you? We need, what is your number? 25, I think. Anyone else 25, I think, in there? You're 25, I think. Oh. In the 20s, somewhere? All right. No, number four. Number eight. Oh, that's me. Oh, that's me. Oh, that's me. Um. No, I was still working on this one. Oh. Quinn. Axe symmetry is what? Okay. So what's the vertex? Very good. All right. Jonathan, you seen how we're getting that? Yeah, you can. Not much math having to go there. That's it, man. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and graph some of these. So, taking a look, taking a look at this graph right here, I'm going to actually give you the coordinates. Off you go. Graph it. Using your vertex axis of symmetry, and then however else you graph, either a table or using patterns. Okay, negative 2, 0. From there, we have our axis symmetry. X equals negative 2. Remember your patterns. If you go over 1, you go up 1. But you got to multiply by A, which is 3. So that's you go over 1 and up 3. Okay? And then technically, you go over 2 and up 4. But since A is 3, it's over 2 and up 4 times A, which is 12. Yeah. So it won't fit, will So. There we got it. Okay, it says compare the graph to f of x equals x squared. Go ahead and tell your neighbor how this one will differ from x squared. All right. Hey, just so we know, there is f of x equals x squared. A quick sketch of it in pencil there. How are they different? What's one way? Volunteer. Yes. Yeah, one's wider. Which one's wider? So f of x is wider than m of x. Okay, so f is wider than m. So m is narrower. Okay. How do we say it's narrow? Narrower. Bailey? Good, that's a vertical stretch of what? By a factor of three. Okay? Vertical stretch by a factor of three. How else does it differ? Jilly? 
Good. It is translated. Make sure you note that term. Translated left to unit. Well done. So vertical stretch of three, you could actually say vertical stretch by a factor of three. Yeah, that's the way Bailey said it. It's a correct format. Yeah. Hey, our scores right now, by the way, four, three, six, four, three. You guys have four right now. Tied for second. You got to be ready with the answers, man. Okay. So, before you graph number 10, I want you to tell your neighbor how it's going to differ from the graph of f of x equals x squared. Just by looking at the different pieces. By the way, if you're drawing in your axes, I'd probably put them right here on this one. Hey, guys. Hey, really quick, Isaiah had a good question, which gives him a point. Good question was, like, why did you put your axes there? So the way I know that, I first, I quickly look at it and I go, my vertex is 6, 4. Okay, which means if I'm just doing, like, thinking, this is my brain right here. This is what I think in my brain. I'm like, dude, 6, 4 is going this way 6 and up 4. That means my vertex is starting right there. And this graph has a negative A term, so it's opening downward. So my quick sketch in my mind looks something like that, which tells me if I want to graph this, I really want to zoom in on this chunk right here, which is why I put my axes right here. And I want to probably see more of the bottom than the top. So I, I don't care about anything over here. That's why my axes aren't covering that side. Really good question. Now that I gave away where the vertex was. It's ridiculous. But that's okay. There's the axis of symmetry. Okay, pay, pay attention to the question. The question is, when I go over one unit, how far am I going down? Number 26, who are you? That uh, Quinn thinks it's him. Anyone object? All right, go ahead, Quinn. So you go over one. How far do you go down? 0.25 or 1 fourth. Where did you get that number, Quinn? Good. That's how far you move down. Okay. So you go over 1, down 1 usually, but you got to multiply by 0.25. Go over 2 and down how far? Usually you go down 4, right? But in this case, you've got to multiply it by 0.25, so that is? Down 1, not half. Yeah. So over 3, you usually go down how far? 9. But since it's 9 quarters... Nine quarters is? How many have ever had nine quarters in their pocket? No. Nine quarters is how much money? Two twenty-five. And then reflect your points. All right. What happened to that graph compared to x squared? It got wider. When something gets wider, we call it a vertical. It's a vertical shrink. Oh, come on, guys. Vertical shrink by a factor of number twelve. Who's twelve? Yeah. Of one fourth, not negative one fourth, just one fourth. Okay. What else do we have? Number 18. How else does it differ? Who's number 18? 
Uh oh, no 18. Number 19. Don't go for 23. It's just a random number table. I'm just using random numbers here. Aaron, is that you? Okay, so how? what else is it doing? Reflection over the x-axis. Okay. What made it reflect over the x-axis? The negative did. Yep. Yeah. There's one other. Translated right six and up four. Well done. Please note that you have to put the reflection first before the translation. Otherwise, it's not up four, right? Hey guys, that's a key thing when you're doing your test, especially if you're doing an online one. Think about what this is saying. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick sketch just over here. If I... If I choose to translate first, move it six, and then up four, and then reflect it, that brings my vertex down here. Everyone clear on that? And then you're opening upwards. Okay? Or actually, you're still opening downwards, I guess. But it's still down here. Versus reflecting first, meaning I'm opening down, and then moving. Okay? You've got to reflect and then move it. You don't move it and then reflect it, okay? Because you're reflecting over this line. So if you reflect this point over that line, it's down here. If you reflect this point over that line, it's still right there. Okay, so this piece has to come first. Make a note to yourself. You have to reflect first. All right. Questions? Okay. Um, you guys gained a point. You guys gained a couple points. All right. Number 11, tell your neighbor what happens on number 11, what that actually means. That's some like crazy wordiness right there. Volunteer. Kellen. Yeah, what do you think is happening there? Yeah, like how, what does this mean? Would be like your what value? It's not quite your K value. Hey, it's a good shot, though. Kellen gets a point for trying there. She, Kellen, Kellen is right. You do plug in. Where you see F right here, you plug in F of X. You plug in this thing. Okay? So I'm going to take G of X is equal to F of X. That's what this says. So that F of X right there is actually... We're going to replace that x plus 2 with, we're going to replace it with the 3 and the parentheses, and we have the x. Jonathan, did you have something to add? Is that your hand or not? You want to say what you're going to say? Good. That part becomes 3 right there. That Notice that it, this x plus 2 is in parentheses. That means the part that is in parentheses gets the 2. So we add it to the 1. The minus 1 on the outside is still minus 1. Okay. So this is function notation. So, well done there, Jonathan. So really what, go ahead. No, it's still X. Yeah. So really, the only part, let, let's make sure everyone sees that, the only part that actually changed was this piece right here. That one, we added 2 to to get that 3. That's it. 
Okay? How many think you got it? Okay, we're going to come back to that here in a minute. This right here, tell your neighbor how that is going to change this. Hey, a volunteer want to take a shot at it? Jilly? Okay. Hey, very good. She's actually said in words what's going to happen. It's going to reflect over the x-axis. That's what that negative does. Okay. So how does it change your equation, Jilly? Good. So if I, if I line everything up here, the f of x, when I plug in the f of x, that's right here. That's our 1 half times x minus 3 squared minus 5. So that's this piece right here. And then that negative just kicks on the outside there. Okay, so that becomes negative 1 half times x minus 3 squared minus 5. So the only thing that really changed was... The negative is now attached to the one-half, which means it reflects over the x-axis. That is how it's going to change. Bailey? Oh, you would have to just, actually, you have to bring it here and here, yes. Good call. So that should be a plus five. Bailey, good, good, uh, good catch there. Yeah, so one extra piece. Nice job, Bailey. You don't have to bring it in here, though, right? Because this one half is attached to it. Okay, so, but when we describe it, we're still saying this is a reflection in the x axis. Okay, we're reflecting it in the x axis. Okay, how's this, how did this one change if we're describing it? what translation of F so we're translating F how much how far are we translating it? how far not three yeah we're translating it two okay we're moving it two units it will end up at three but we're moving it two units which way are we moving it? You were moving it to the... This was at once, so think about your graph. The graph had a... At what, where's that point at for a vertex? Oh, I'm losing some of you. Where's this point? Where's our original vertex? Original vertex is... One... one. Negative one, negative one, right? Yeah. Where's the new vertex? Down here. Negative three, negative one. So that moves it to? It moved it from negative one, negative one to? Negative three, negative one. So it moved it two to the left. So if you forget, there you go. This. Remember, plus two, it's always backwards inside the parentheses. Okay. Translation, two units left. All right. Part of your assignment tonight is to graph those two. Okay. I'll help you with your axes. Hopefully you'd recognize that you got to see the top part here. Okay. This one right here, let's go ahead and set it up so that it's like that. So part of your assignment is to graph those today. All right. Tomorrow we will also get into the other page, that the part we skipped on the other page, the odd-even functions. We'll deal with that tomorrow. Questions?